welcome back to A Fresh Story, the podcast where we have conversations about brave decisions to start over again. I'm Jenny. And I'm Olivia. And we're so glad you're here today. Okay, we are here with Shani Silver. She is an author and podcaster, originally from Fort Worth, Texas. And her name is pronounced like rainy with a sh- and I'm adding that in here for anybody listening. Uh, her book is a single revolution. Don't look for a match light one. And it helps singles reframe singlehood to see its value and validity for as long as we happen to be single, which we fucking love. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. She is not an advocate for singlehood. She's an advocate for people being happy while single hear that everybody. And there is a difference. Her podcast, a single serving yeah. podcast launched in April of 2019 in the hopes of giving single women content that for once didn't revolve around dating shocker and to support singles around the world and shedding the societal shame of singlehood i can't even i i'm i i have i'm just so excited like i'm so excited like (laughs) this is everything we talk about here at fresh starts because Mm -hmm. you know we are known to we're known as the first divorce registry and there's a lot of stigma around divorce and all that stuff but we always say that we are not anti-marriage right we're pro-joy right? We're pro finding yourself. We're pro freedom. Freedom can come in a relationship and it can come in singlehood. And so I just, I love that you are doing what we're doing, which is like tearing down these like stigmas and these walls and saying like, let's get to it because I've been single since my divorce. It's been four years and I'm really happy single. And it's going to take a lot for somebody to come into my life and make that difference. So I would love for you to just kind of introduce yourself from your perspective and how you got into this topic. Sure. It's actually so wild listening to you read the bio because I'm like, (laughs) yeah, I still really agree with every word of that. That's awesome. Um, (laughs) It it really encapsulates everything. I think how I got into this was I was, um, I've been single for 16 years and Mm -hmm. for the first 10, it was just this endless, miserable, maddening grind Mm -hmm. through Mm -hmm. Um, I call it the search for someone else, just like this endless search for someone else that was completely fruitless. I never met one person that I started a relationship with in 10 years of looking. And it was just like, can you imagine looking for an apartment for 10 years and never finding one? Like you Mm. would lose your mind. You would absolutely lose your mind. And I was losing mine. Um, And I just, at some point I had to recognize that like my life was meant for more than that. My life was meant to do more than swipe it away. And Mm-hmm. I kind of figured like, well, it was a really rough decade and I learned a lot from it. Maybe the point of all that was helping it change. Maybe it wasn't yeah. for nothing. Maybe there was a greater yeah. good that it could serve. And so I decided to take, it, it sounds really cheesy to say it out loud, but like to take pain and do something productive with it mm. is how my whole career came yeah. to be because it was a very, very painful decade. And yeah. if I can climb out of that, I'm going to help other people do it too. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yes. I love that. Yeah, that's all what we're all about here. So what is your experience with dating apps? Because we're going to get into it about the dating app experience. Mm-hmm. And, and we want your perspective on that, all this because you are the expert in all of this. So what what is your experience with dating apps? And, you know, like, if, feel free to share as much or as little as you want. But, you know, and we'll, we're, we'll share ours as well. Sure. Um, dating apps uh, intentionally exploit the hope of single people for every dollar it's worth. That's all they do. They exploit the hope of single people and charge them money for it. Um, The, Mm -hmm. it's a really hard thing to tell people because nobody wants to hear it. They want to believe that dating apps are a tool for finding love because that's how everybody (laughs) describes them. That's how they describe themselves. And the first time you tell somebody, no, a dating app doesn't want you to find love because it stops making your money that day. Why would it ever yeah. want that? Dating apps are not incentivized for you to find love. They're incentivized mm. for you to never find love and no mm-hmm. one wants to believe it. And I've been doing this for so long. I don't give a shit anymore. If you don't believe me that the pain that dating apps have caused you never deserved to happen, all the money you paid them for nothing, <laughs> right. it never it never should have happened to you. Yeah. If I'm telling you that something bad should have never happened to you, that somebody did something very intentionally cruel to you on yeah. purpose. And all you can hear is, no, no, my husband's in there somewhere. If that's <laughs> all you can hear, that's on you. At this point, it's on you. I've been doing this since 2018. If you haven't heard me yet, I 
I'm so tired of feeling like it's my fault <laughs> because I've been screaming and sometimes crying on TikTok, which yeah. is mm. awful. Can you believe? Who does no, that? No, but you Who know what? It made, me, it made me be like, because you were crying in the video where you were like so excited that it was that the lawsuit. And I was like, the, and like, I want to talk to you before that, but I was like, okay, we got to get her because this is so, it's so true. And I was thinking about it this morning. Um, it's, I'm in Edinburgh, so it's, I had morning already. And so um, I was thinking about it this morning and I was thinking like, Knowing what um, venture capital is like, knowing what private equity is like, knowing what the worlds of companies that get investment, right? Companies that get flooded with cash so that they can make a great app and you can see ads all over the subway. Understanding what that is like, if you understand it even a little bit, you understand that data is the most important thing to these people. And when we join these, and so, so once you understand that, there's no way that you also don't understand what you are saying because those two things, like, go so well together and they want your data. They want your information. They want all of that. That's how they make money. Cause then people will go, well, I never paid for hinge. Sure. But you uploaded your foot. Fo- I did it right. Like I've been on there. Like yeah, you upload your photos, you upload your information, you upload your education. They see your swiping habits. They see all of that. You are what is being sold and traded. And once you understand that, it's like, of course they're not there. <laughs> Of course, they're not there to to serve you. And we always draw from you know our brother met his girlfriend on Tinge, Ten, and yeah. it's like so so you you look at that one experience of like well they met, and then you know everybody holds on to that. It's like this six degrees of Kevin Bacon of of mm-hmm. a you know like an old wives' tale of so no I actually know somebody that you know did that and yeah you hold on to that but it's like once you understand that data is king and that trading it and selling it and using your information is what all they want all they want then you understand that the whole thing you see behind the the curtain like you see the wizard of oz you know well i know a lot of people who have won a thousand dollars at a craps table in vegas too right that doesn't mean i'm going to and it's the exact same principle Mm -hmm. the business and its users have completely competing goals those are the two yes. industries where that's true. Yes. Mm. Those, gambling and dating apps do not yeah. want mm. their users to succeed. The house always mm. wins. The house always fucking wins. Yeah. And those people that met their partners on dating apps, and I, everyone takes such offense to this. I never mean it to be insulting. I love love, but that's an accident, babe. The dating app did not <laughs> intend for that to happen. No. That You're was a anomaly. huge error. Like well, it's an error. Yeah. If, if you mm-hmm. find love on uh-huh. a dating app, the dating app reads that as an error, as a flaw. Yeah. It didn't yeah. want that. Ooh, like, yeah. Yeah. That's so fascinating. So I'm actually an example of that. So I met my ex-husband and I use ex-husband and because people know, but that uh, we met on match.com, but we, so I want to talk about the history of dating apps in a second, but I was on JDate and match.com back in the early 2000s, but when they were not an app, right? They were a website. Mm -hmm. So I met my ex-husband. He was living in Connecticut. I'm on Long Island and match.com matched us over the water. Because it doesn't understand the It didn't understand the, the, that there was water there. So I, yeah. I am a homebody. <laughs> so I only wanted to meet people that were close to me within yeah. 10 miles or whatever. We're on the, we're on the coast here on Long Island. It literally matched me 10 miles across the water. And so he did for a long time commute. Anyway, that's how I met him. And then we divorced eight years later. So, you know, I don't but know I how think, it, I think this gets to the point that I right. also want to bring up, which is that you, it, it is such a vulnerability to enter a space and be like, ready for a partner, looking for love, vulnerable and willing to believe you, right? Because I think that one of the things Olivia entered that relationship with was like, I just want to get married kind of energy. Not that you, mm-hmm. you know, but like it was yeah, like it was that in my kind early of energy. 20s, yeah. mm-hmm. and, and it's dangerous because it allows for people to be taken serious advantage of. And, yeah. you know, yeah. So let's go back for a second. I would love to talk about the history of kind of how these companies came to be. And, and if you know a a little bit, I don't, I don't know a ton. Maybe you know more (laughs) than I do, but I'm curious about the transition between like when we were using it, it was a web, it was like on the website web experience, right? There was a web experience. When did it become apps? If you know, and like, when did kind of the rise of the dating app come to be? Uh, What I do know is that, so I'm 41. I don't know how old you guys are, but um, 39, I'm close. Okay. 36. Yeah. So, our generations are the internet's guinea pigs at every mm-hmm. opportunity because yes. we were the first teenagers to use it and we were the first young adults to use it. And we were the first generation that used dating apps or websites and mass ever. And so mm. we have just kind of grown along with the yeah. technology and the, the, 
the, I think one of the cruelest things about the evolution of digital dating is how it used to be better. It used to involve far more questions, far right. more. Um, That's my yeah. point. I think. Yeah. That, you, you, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yes. A hundred percent. And it became an like what was the eHarmony, right? Like kind of these early right. ones, even like Plenty of Fish, like, which was ridiculous, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. They they were like, I feel like you had to sit down and type out these profiles. It was more like the video dating things from like the eighties, where mm-hmm. you had to like mm-hmm. send in your videos, right? Yeah. yeah. And then and then suddenly I felt like this transition. I think Tinder. I think t- I and I don't know that much about it either, but I think I remember. Tinder being like the first one with the swiping. You're right. I think Tinder was the tipping point. I think that's I right. think that's correct. Yeah, we'll yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure. Then yeah, no. .com went and got an app, and then, like then everybody had to catch up to Tinder. But I think it was this sort of swipe experience that sort of made it really fast, and it also made it. You know, it was I was on Match.com and JDate in 2010, and it was weird. And people were like, why are you on that? You're yeah, young. they were so worried you were going to get, like, murdered and driven out to uh, Joshua yeah. Tree. And it was Everybody, like, yeah. <laughs> yes. But, like, yeah. And I think, you know, we had an uncle that met his wife on J-Date. But they were, like, old. You know, they were, like, 26. <laughs> like, or, like, oh, they were, God. like, you know, there was, like, one of those things. I, maybe they were, like, a little bit older than that. But I had just gotten out of college. I broke up with my boyfriend. And I didn't know where to meet people. I was living back on Long Island. And it was there were some guys and and I had whatever experiences I had, but it was like when I would tell people that it was like, why are you doing that? And then I ended up in a relationship within three years, Tinder was big and everybody was doing it. Like it it would changed overnight. The age range changed overnight of who was doing dating apps. And suddenly that was the only way to date. Well, they were the, the websites like match.com and eHarmony and JDate were limiting their own options by giving right. people the ability to input their preferences. Fewer matches were resulting because mm-hmm. shocker, we're not meant to match with fucking everyone. So no. they mm-hmm. needed to find a way to have it um, include more people and keep more people using yeah. the service. Yeah. And the way they did that but it was by removing the input, Filters. removing all of your preferences. And instead um. they let your um they let your swiping activity provide them with data and then they would use right. that data to actually hide people that you would want to see and suppress them and they would just only show you people that you wouldn't want to see so that you would continue swiping longer and see more ads or pay more money and um that's how you get a class action lawsuit I wow. didn't understand. I that. didn't understand that either. Is that why I literally, when I after my divorce, I went on for like two seconds yeah. and saw no one. I mean, not one person that yeah. I would even remotely want to be in a bar with for three seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Shani. They know okay. what they're doing. They're very good at their job. Yeah. They are they very are good very at good. minting yeah. money. That's yeah. that's it. That is it. And like, yeah. I'm telling you, if you put a million people at Glastonbury, a few of them are going to fall in love by accident. Like a broken clock is right twice a day. If you have that many people using something, right. yes, yeah, some of them are going to fall in love by accident, Mazel tov. But in general, it should be much more yeah. efficient, much more effective, yeah. and there should be greater turnover. But I know both of you have noticed, you can go on one year and go on three years later, it's the same people on that app. Yeah. That shouldn't be happening. Why does that happen? Because these are not about love. These are about money. Stop fucking using them. Burn them down. I don't know why this is such a novel concept, but I'll keep screaming about it until they're either gone or until they are – until they implement things like consequences and protections for people's safety. Um, Mm -hmm. And they're just not – and I – it's – yeah. It's, well, it's almost can, yeah. strange to talk about them because they haven't been a part of my life in so long. Like I'm, I, I well, deleted them in January of 2019. So I have been yeah. out of the game since then. But let's – okay. So let's talk about the like what you love to talk about then. Like the – like I love your like good morning single people videos. Like the way that you I, – like I think, you know, so many of us, women especially, have been taught that like there is an end goal, which is to be married – and I am – I'm sorry to say I am married now and I apologize. You didn't meet him online. I didn't have to apologize for being married. That's wonderful. I feel, I feel very unapo- <laughs> I'm very unapologetic about being married to this man. Um, no, I met him in person. We met at a museum. Like it was the most organic way to meet somebody I've yeah. ever encountered. That's incredible. And I know. Yeah. And it's so – And but like we actually stayed connected because of Facebook but like secondary. But yeah, I think that we, so many of us – have come to believe that that is like the ultimate goal is to be partnered, is to be with somebody, is to completely center men. And there's been so many wonderful conversations happening, I think in large part because of TikTok. I agree. Of of like decentering men, the worst kind of women to be friends with are women that center men, right? Like things like this where it's like, you know, because we are so much more than that. And so I would love to talk with you about that, 
about how we are so much more than just our, our relationship with a man or a woman. Well, I think we're more than our singlehood too. And mm -hmm. we haven't really been encouraged as single people to give a shit about anything other than finding someone. And yeah. to be 100% clear, I want a husband too. Like yeah. I want one. I'm 41. I've never had one. There are aspects of it that sound nice to me. There are aspects yeah. of it that sound like absolute bullshit and mm -hmm. I won't be participating in those. And you don't But have like them. it's – it's a nice thing. I think marriage is a nice thing. I think I love is a great thing. I think partnership mm -hmm. is wonderful. And as someone mm -hmm. who has been alone for 16 years, I think company is lovely too. I want that. Yeah. And that's completely valid and legitimate yeah. to want. It doesn't make you any less feminist. It doesn't make you any less independent. To want love and company and affection and sex, those are wonderful things and mm -hmm. I look forward yeah. to them. The difference is I'm not going to be miserable before I have them. And yeah, single right. people are not encouraged to be right, happy no. unless they have a partner. That's where you get – that's where you get into trouble. That's where single people get into trouble. That's where we are vulnerable. That's where we are financially exploited, emotionally exploited, yeah. Yeah. shat right. on by people socially and societally. It's just – it's not fair. All we are is a human adult. Why <laughs> yeah. is that missing something for someone? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think I think so much – and this is a lot of the work that we do at Fresh Starts is like – you're not defined by the things – you don't have to be defined by things you don't want to be defined by. So like I think it's very weird when we refer to people who don't have children as child-free. They're just people. They can define themselves as child-free if that's something that means mm -hmm. something to them. But like they're just people in the world that's who such are, a good point. happen to not have children. When people aren't partnered, they're not single people. That's just a person. And, mm -hmm. and that, like I say to my friends when they go through breakups or something – I'm like, well, if, if something you want is to be with somebody again, you will find that. Like, I believe that. But if, but if that's not something you want, like, that's also cool too. You know, I think we, we define, there's so much more to life than babies and weddings. And so we define, but we want to define people around those two things. Like if you're a single woman who right. doesn't have children, you're single and child free. No, maybe, maybe that's just Veronica. Maybe Veronica is just being Veronica, you know? And she doesn't need I Archie. think that's She'll, yeah. She doesn't need Archie, but she could want him. But like, I, I agree. Like, I think, you know, we always say we're like, we love love. We believe in love, obviously. And but it's not about like and, and that's not when your life starts. This idea that like life starts. And also it is so much less lonely to be alone than to be with the wrong person. Like, I think that's Correct. a. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, there's a the lot, there's obviously a lot to unpack here with capitalism and patriarchy and Christianity, I'm going to say, sure. right? Yeah. It's much, it's much easier to say you should just be married to a man and have children and go work your nine to five job, right? That's so, yeah. so Judaism so, does it too. We can't ignore our oh, own. Uh, Abrahamic, uh, yeah, all sure. Abrahamic guess, religions. We can just say uh, Abrahamic yeah, I'm religions. I'm talking about like yeah. the foundation of America, like so much of like what we are Judeo-Christian um, yeah. tradition. Yeah, there you go. Right, 100%. There it is. There it is. Because believe me, we come from an Amish Jewish family that wanted nothing <laughs> more for us than to have Jewish husbands. Yeah. So I very much understand that. You know, and I thought I, I thought I was winning that jackpot right when I found a, a nice Jewish boy on uh, Match. dot com, and didn't work out that way, right? And so yeah. I think it's there's a piece of this that there society is so afraid, especially of women. I'm going to say of happy women who are on their own. Right. Because what does that mean to them? Right. Then they project, well, maybe I'm not happy or maybe they get to have this freedom. Yeah. Right. There's a freedom there. You know, like watching Miley Cyrus, you know, do her thing on stage and seeing how fucking happy she is. Right. And like other women I have talked to were not so into that. And I'm like, but why? Right. She's happy and she's free and she's doing because her thing. They're and picking up a man's shit off the floor every day and that yep. sucks for them. And they don't mm -hmm. know how to make that better. Yes. So they that, yep. bitch at other yeah. people who don't have yep. it as bad as they do. That's and then they happening. and then they glorify the institution that they're in because the only way that they can be happy in that institution that they're actually miserable in is to right. pretend brainwash themselves basically and be like it's actually the best thing in the whole world. Yes, I do roll my eyes at him all the time and yes, he does drive me crazy. I mean, I've been watching Love is Blind and like I was tweeting I was like, "Do you know that your husband's not actually supposed to drive you crazy?" Like my I I I my husband doesn't drive me crazy. I've never said that. Like I've never been like. By the oh, way, he my husband did nuts. drive me crazy, and it almost <laughs> actually ended me. So you right. know, it's I mean, not fun. Thing, it's like, like, no. it, like we have this sitcom <laughs> idea of what like a marriage right. should be, and then if somebody is actually steps out of line and is happy, we want to not. We want that not to be amplified because that. I'm could curious. Be bad. Yeah, Shaney, what has been the reaction, like, especially on TikTok, right? Like, to, when you started talking about, like, this singlehood and, and all this stuff, what reaction have you gotten from people? 
it's about 50-50. I have people that are really relieved to see my content and really empowered by my content and they're really excited and they're agreeing with me. And then I have people who, uh, how do I say this? Who who criticize my work? We can can describe it that way if you want. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But it's a lot of projection. And by the way, no one has to agree with me. Like I don't need to go online just to be agreed with. I don't think any of us would be on the internet if all we had the capacity for was to be agreed with all the time. (laughs) It's fine to disagree with me and I'm not afraid of being disagreed with. I am afraid of um, being degraded and insulted publicly because other people see that too. Like say what you want to me, but my audience is reading this. And I yeah. don't want them to think that this is what is true about them because it's 100%. not. percent, and we see that too. Yeah. We 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 have that too, especially with divorce. And and mm-hmm. I, one of my big TikTok platforms is divorce is not a failure. And right. I have people come up to my comments and will say this and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not saying I'm not responding to you for me. I don't give a shit what you think about me. But I don't want the mom in the middle of the night who's scrolling TikTok to think that divorce is a failure because of you, right? And so, um, I really get that. So I would love if you could talk to us about this law lawsuit, right? Because Mm -hmm. uh, for anybody that's, that's listening and has no idea what we're talking about, what is this lawsuit that got you crying on TikTok out of tears of joy? (laughs) There's a lawsuit that I don't think it's been certified as a class action yet, but it's been filed. There's a lawsuit that's been filed um, against the match group. And essentially they're being sued because they make love elusive on purpose. That was the phrase, elusive on purpose. Mm. I want that like blown up poster size and put on the wall in my living room, elusive on purpose. <laughs> and then um, primarily what what they're talking about is how the match group has made dating apps um, essentially addictive. Yeah, and yeah. they're they're causing addictive behaviors, and they're not um, they're not delivering on what people are paying for. And it's like read read the lawsuit is what I would say. Like yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, summarize yeah. it wrong for you on a podcast, but like read it, read the articles. Yeah. They're there. You can check them out. But what it's doing is saying like, I was right. These are yeah. bullshit. They're stealing your money. They're hiding people you would want to see on purpose. Yeah. They are fucking with you and they have yeah. been fucking with you for right, years yeah. and years and years. Nail them to the fucking wall. I, I mean, mm. there is, I'm so scared that they're going to settle. Because I yeah. want this to go to trial so badly. I want to be in the room when the verdict <laughs> is read yeah. so badly because it's really hard to build a career off of going against the grain, which I'm sure yes. you know. It's oh, really yeah. hard to have to convince people that you're right yeah. every single day of your life. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's really painful. It's really draining. And the whole yeah. time you're like, but you'd feel better. And like, I yeah. can't, I, I, I feel like Cassandra, just like Jane, telling everybody what's going to happen. People. We have so <laughs> many people here that we can I mean, talk to our friend, Laura Danger and, and Crystal Britt and all of these people, you know, it's the same, it's the same conversation. And yeah. I, I appreciate you sharing this and I appreciate your, your, you know, I'm going to use the word enthusiasm, but you know, mm-hmm. it, like in, in understanding like the importance of this, because it all ties together, right? This is a feminist issue. This is an issue about, you know, you know, women's rights and human rights and exploiting, Mm -hmm. right. And on all of this. And so, and also this idea, like you said, we have grown up right in this tech world. We were Oregon trail kids, Sims, all these things. Right. And so like it, it is addicting. Right. Mm -hmm. And so using love, right. Which is the ultimate goal for every, for everybody thinks, right. The ultimate goal to basically get them in. I guess my, now that I'm talking to you and have been out of it for a little while, I'm shocked people would do this, right? Not questioning what's their agenda, yeah. right? What is their agenda? Of course they want to make money. And of course they don't want you to find love. So I don't know. I just, now I'm but like, nothing's going to get you more praise than a partnership. Nothing is going to make right. you more loved, more societally yeah. accepted. Do you know how much it breaks my heart? My family is well aware of what I do for a living. And I swear to you, nothing, nothing would bring them the joy that me bringing home a nice Jewish boy would bring them. And that breaks my fucking heart because I've written a book and I've built an entire career. I've been supporting myself alone, not splitting rent, not splitting bills ever, Mm -hmm. not once. I've been doing this the whole time. And that would never make them as happy or as proud as me bringing home a nice Jewish boy. And so I kind of don't want to on purpose because fuck that. Like that's not fair. I should be able no. to receive societal acceptance and family acceptance and love. And yeah. they, by the way, they love me. Let's not. Yeah, no, about. totally. But like, we understand. Yeah, it's, it's tough. We but nothing's going to get yeah. you as much praise or acceptance as a partnership, as a romantic partnership. Mm-hmm. First of all, as a heterosexual romantic partnership, that's right. like going to give you the most praise in the whole wide world, which is fucking nauseating even just talking about it. But 
Yeah. Like yeah. it shouldn't be the thing that makes people mm-hmm. the happiest. It shouldn't be the thing that people will fly across the country or across the world to celebrate without questioning, without, yeah. just, it's right. just, it's so accepted. It is so pervasive. We mm-hmm. never question it. There's nothing, you can't fuck with love. You can't, the, the woman who like says to her girlfriend who's newly engaged, are you sure? She's a bitch and a half for even mm-hmm. asking. Mm-hmm. But she's smarter than everyone else who just blindly says, oh, my God, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you're allowed to be deep with this shit. You're allowed to yeah. think about it deeply and question it deeply and really ask, like, is this what you genuinely want? Or were you just tired of not being single anymore? Were you tired of being ashamed of being single? Like, what yeah. – because both happen, right? Genuine love and wonderful marriages happen and yeah. shame-driven marriages happen too. Let's not a lot. lie about it. Happen it. A do lot. you know happen do lot. you know the song Does He Love You by Rilo Kylie? Yes, I do actually. It I is heard that, that band song is oh, I'm a huge fan. But it is that exactly. It's like yep. you, you go look up the lyrics like after this because it's all about like does he like does he love you? Does he does he hold your tiny face in his hands? Like does he love you or, or did you or were you just tired of being single and was your time running out? And like when I went through so I went through a breakup. I was with somebody for 10 years and we were engaged and we broke up. Uh, about a year after we had a COVID wedding plan. So we broke up, we never got married. And then we broke up about a year later. Um, and I listened to that song on repeat. Cause it was like, Oh, I kind of maybe was that girl. Like I thought my time was running out and like, I, again, there's a nice Jewish boy and everybody was very excited for me. And there was a big wedding planned. And I think that part of that, like, you know, then I blew up my life and then I end up in Scotland marrying a Scottish, like an Englishman. And what you like I think part of my we eloped and I think obviously it was easy for a lot of reasons but some of that was like no I'm not ch- this isn't for public this isn't because of all of you mm-hmm. I just this is for me and so I'm not doing this and I felt with my ex like it was a little bit like see everybody I'm worthy I'm I'm worth it nice Jewish boy got the last name Katz like I'm I'm moving forward you know what I mean yeah. like we're going and and it felt like I was trying to prove something and finally when I was with my husband it was like I'm not trying to prove anything but I think you have to get to that point and it's not about self-love and it's not about you, you can't find some you know RuPaul like you're not gonna love somebody if you can't love yourself whatever but it it's about I don't know what it's about, but it, you can't do it if you're if you're doing it for these other reasons. It's not fucking well, worth it. And that's to do it for what those social other media reasons. is these days, right? That's all yeah. social media is. And I am always talking about like you have no idea what's behind the pictures. I have a set of family pictures that I share openly and talk about how when these family pictures were taken with my ex husband and the kids, we were talking about separating in the other room, right? And it's like he was talking about other women, you know. In, and and yet we have these beautiful family pictures, right? And so it's like we are living in this Truman show, like that truly, mm-hmm. right? And so it's like everybody thinks that everybody has this beautiful big love and then they need to go out and find it and they're using all the apps. So I want to talk about the safety aspect of, of online dating too, right? Which goes into this and all these things. Um, I definitely had my experiences with be- meeting men online and, and going out with them and not having... I, I'm I'm glad I survived. I will put it that way, right? I'm glad that I made it through because there were some experiences there that I was like, oh, I should not be in this person's basement. This is not a great idea, right? And so, like, nobody should uh, have a basement is what it goes how, down to. Nobody should have a basement. <laughs> how? I mean, how, have you heard? Or I'm just curious, like, your thoughts on the safety aspect around dating apps, like, you know, if maybe from people telling you stories or just knowing dating apps. There is no safety aspect to dating apps. Right. There is no safety aspect to dating apps at all whatsoever. And you have to know that if you're going to use them. And spare me with the fucking block button because the block button means something already happened. You had to endure yeah. something that you then wanted to block. There was nothing yeah. about that dating app that preemptively background or screen check, screen, wait, screen right. four, there it is, screen four, any sort of history of violent or abusive behavior, predatory behavior, or just fucking creepy behavior. Right. It is a free for all. Every. Yeah kind of person has access to every kind of person. And if you are lonely and Mm. desperate and you just want a fucking husband, you only hear that through the positive. Anybody could be there instead of anybody could fucking be there. Like you Mm. have to be very aware that there is nothing in place for your safety whatsoever. And I think all of them should be shut down until that's no longer true. I know they can do it. I know they can implement technology to keep people safe. I know they can. They just won't because that's 
an impediment to love that they get to market. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it's, there is no safety aspect. There's none. You are meeting strangers. You don't even know if the person you're talking to is a human being or a bot. You don't know if you're talking to the human being that they purport to be. You have Mm -hmm. no idea. And to, to be completely fair, you don't know who you're talking to when you sit down at the bar at a restaurant and strike up a conversation with a stranger. You don't know them either. Fine. Mm -hmm. But dating apps are a fire hose of who knows who. You have no idea and you have no safety. And I'm tired of like, I'm tired of these like best practice posts about how to go on a date and like text five of your friends and make sure you have this app turned on and blow. Why does it have to, why did it have to come to that? Because so many people have been assaulted because so many people have been stalked because so many horrible things have happened because they met on a dating app. It's just, it blows my mind that these things are still legal. Well, it's interesting, right? Because there, to your point, there's something to be said, like, you don't know how, you don't know who anybody is, right? Mm -hmm. But if you do see somebody in a bar and they're, they are in society, right? And they are like, presenting to a certain degree there's a couple of boxes you can check off they right. can they can you know function in society they know how to order a drink right i and right whereas like i agree with you and i it's funny i follow a lot of these like matchmakers and dating people and sometimes they'll post these conversations and i think that most of the time these are bots these are not real people talking and i will call it out and i'm like this is not a real human like i don't know what to tell you like you know because they're analyzing the conversations and i'm like nobody actually speaks this way this is not a real human and every time i comment that people like my comment because i'm like can we just call it out for what it is like this is not real if you're listening to this and you're like i do want to meet somebody what would you suggest that people do if if that's something that they want live yeah Yeah. live your life live Jenny went to a fucking museum. Live. Yeah. Yeah. Live live your life. Do the things that you like. Yeah. Be who you are. And at the back of your mind, you cannot have, I'm gonna join a soccer league so I can meet a husband. You have to yeah. just love playing soccer. Yeah. You mm-hmm. cannot assign this secondary goal to every single aspect of your life because yeah. then things you enjoy doing are yeah. gonna disappoint you. And that's so unfair to you. Like if I hear one more time, oh, you're going on a solo trip, maybe you'll meet someone. No, I'm going on a solo trip because I've never been to Italy. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. You can't live your life that. with this like secondary goal. <laughs> yeah. Is this or or maybe it's your primary goal? I don't yeah. know. But just yeah. just go to the grocery store. Don't be on the lookout or on the hunt in the cereal aisle right. for a guy all the time or a girl all the time. Yeah. Like, don't don't live your life in service of finding a partner because Ooh. it will. It's a one way track to hating the life, life you are lucky enough to be living. Yeah, we have a whole ass life. And it can be wonderful and beautiful and full of things we love and full of jobs we love and friends we love and family we love and activities we love and hobbies and talents. All of these wonderful things get clouded when you're living your life underneath the weight of, but I don't have a partner. And that is a crime that you're committing against yourself. So fucking you, stop. Yeah. Just you live heard it life. here. You heard it here, folks. That I is love, it. It's true. That's it. I love it. It's the That's thief of joy. Job. It's yeah. It's the thief of joy. And it's the thief of joy in pursuit of some rules that were made up by people that we don't fucking agree with and that we mm-hmm. don't know and that we're never gonna know because it, it was Abraham. You know what I mean? Like we're never gonna know that guy. And now we have to live by his rules and steal our own joy day to day. And then God forbid we meet somebody while we're living an inauthentic life because we're on the prowl right. constantly. Like right. good luck making that work long term because it's that's really hard when you're like dressing up all the time to go to the grocery store and then you meet that guy like that's not you babes like that's somebody else you're playing a part it's funny i had this revelation a couple weeks ago because i'm very much of that mindset we have an amazing um relationship coach who's at fresh starts and and we love her susan and i was i was interviewing her for our podcast and she said the same thing right she was like go live your life you know you just take the trips. She's like, I've met people at the airport just because I'm sitting there, right? Like, you know, totally the same advice. And so I had this revelation. I took my son to therapy and I'm wearing like the vest and the hat. I'm like, I'm like, I don't care. Like I'm taking my son to therapy. And this cute guy, right, opens the door and he's like, oh, here, let me open the door for you. And I was like, uh, for a second, right? I was like, oh, I'm wearing this really horrible. And I was like, no, fuck that. I'm like, if he's supposed to be my person and he yeah. loves me, it's because he finds my soul in the world, right? He w- it wouldn't matter if I was wearing a fucking clown suit. It's because he found Olivia, right? And yeah, it was yeah. this huge 
mental shift for me to be like, it doesn't actually matter what I do on the outside of me. If that's really the person I'm supposed to be with, he will fall in love with me because he's supposed to find me at that moment in time. I appreciate you speaking out about all of this and with such like, I don't know, grace for everybody's situation, right? Because like yeah. there could there we are very like anti-bitter people. Like we're not angry, we're not bitter. We just want people to live their best lives. And I think like you take such a beautiful approach to that. Say, hey, look, if you can love, yeah. you can get married, you can have multiple marriages, you can live forever alone or with your cat or with your cousin, whatever you want, right? Like that do your thing. And I think so many of us just need that permission right? Mm -hmm. To like get out there and do that. So we just, we appreciate everything you're doing so much. Thank you. I hope that the permission starts coming from society too, because I think nothing's really going to change until it does. Until we stop over celebrating weddings and under celebrating single people, I think we're going to have the culture we have. So it's small incremental change is better than no change at all. And I think sort of opening up people's minds to certain realities that have been clouded because, well, nothing is more important than a wedding and a marriage and babies and family, right? Well, your mental health might be, Mm -hmm. your well-being might be, because if you don't have that, what do you have? Well, they they don't know that they exist as a full human, right? Right. And like, that's really who they are as a full human. And you're allowed to just be a human, like we said, right? And that's really, that's really hard and scary for some people. So I'm glad that you are there to support them on TikTok and your podcast and all the things you do to just keep reminding people like you are allowed to just exist. You're allowed to just be. And, you know, we're here to support you in doing that because it's, it's really, it is those small changes, but that's where how change occurs, right? It changes. Mm -hmm. It starts micro and it becomes macro and it has to start somewhere. So just like, thank you for the work. You're very welcome. I think I think Jenny was right with the whole TikTok thing because I think we're seeing yeah. things in lights that we didn't see them before. Did you guys see the video of that uh, couple that had just gotten married? They were at their own wedding and uh, the bride was very, very clear that she did not want cake shoved in yeah. her face mm-hmm. and her yeah. husband strong armed her to make yeah. her immobile yeah. so that he could shove cake in her face and all yeah. over the yeah. makeup yeah. that she had paid for. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and the comment section was incredible. Yeah. It was incredible. And I hope... I really hope she saw it. I really hope she never yeah. filed that marriage license. I hope she ran fast and far, but yeah, I don't yeah. know. Can you imagine like her father, like standing there watching this happen and he's about to like, or her well, mother, like just watching them, watching her daughter. It depends on who, what they're like. That's I mean, some, true. Peop- That's some true. people think, oh, the marriage. Oh. So these yeah. conversations are happening and they're starting and we're connecting with people. And I think for a long time, Olivia and I felt very alone in the world with our beliefs, just the two of us. And places like TikTok make us feel far less alone because like, I've never had this conversation with somebody else about like, don't define yourself by the things you don't have. You don't have to be child free. You can just be who you are. You don't have Mm -hmm. to be single. Just be who you are. Like, and I think there's these ideas that especially as women, our identities are temporary until we have children. And so it's like, and, and then, and so if we don't do that, what's kind of like our identity doesn't really matter. And we have to really push back on that narrative because there's right. a lot of full, wonderful, whole people that are getting lost in the sauce of this idea that like, this is the only, and there path. are a lot of people that take advantage of that. Like the whole match.com industry yeah. who <laughs> believes that you are not a full person until you get married and they want to take your data. Yeah. So yeah. Shay- and also starting starting these kids on dating apps at like eighteen. So by the time they're twenty four, oh, they're exhausted and they yeah. feel like they're ancient. You know. Yeah. You guys need to check out a woman named Rose Hackman on TikTok yes, or Instagram. She works, or yeah, she's she incredible. Works, yeah. 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 Exactly. It's the same. And like we need to keep shouting it. Right. We all need mm-hmm. to keep talking about this. So speaking of that, where can people find you? What is the po- where is your podcast? Give us all the things. Well, Shaney Silver is very easy to Google. Thank goodness. Um, Great. But. <laughs> Everything is linked in all my social media bios, and I'm at Shaney Silver everywhere, Instagram, TikTok, um, threads, no longer on Twitter because we, we don't stand in anti-Semitic space. Um, and my book is on Amazon, A Single Revolution, Don't Look for a Match, Light One, is on Amazon as we speak, and it's the only place you can buy it. Um, what else? I sometimes forget. Oh, my podcast is on Patreon, but again, just Great. look for the links in my social media bio. That's the easiest Perfect. way to do it. Amazing. Well, we appreciate you more than you even know, because this is the the conversation that absolutely needs to be had. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we millennial ish women are taking back, taking Mm -hmm. everything back. We're just grabbing it all. You know, we're building our own sim house. So I think it's time, (laughs) time, but, uh, 
Thank you. Thank you for your honesty and your authenticity and, and for crying on TikTok and for, yeah. you know, doing <laughs> all those things. things that, saying things that people don't want to hear and sometimes taking the blowback yeah. for that. Like, I know that that's not easy because we no. do the same thing and you are bold and I'm, and, and, and it is important to be bold sometimes for some of us, you know, some of us, and we get to, we get to take turns. We don't always have to be bold, but <laughs> you are bold and you say the things that a lot of people don't want to hear and that a lot of people need to hear. Thank you for listening to today's story. We're always here, and we're so proud of you. A Fresh Story is produced by Fresh Starts Registry, the first and only platform for everything you need to begin again. You can read the show notes and learn more about today's episode at afreshstory.com. Thank you.